hug. Hi. We've got a prototype today of Forest of Radgost. I'm going to take this off my head not to distract anyone. Um, Forest of Radgost is a cooperative game. It's sort of aimed for families and children to um, teach about Slavic mythology. Yes. I say it's not. It's definitely not a game to be played just by children. It's uh, it's kind of designed as to be an, an adult playing with their kids. Yeah, plays so up to seven people. Yeah. So the, the premise of the game is that uh, there are some there are some children lost in the woods, and uh, we are members of the village who are going out to try and find the children and get them back home. So the children fell asleep in a boat, because that mm. that makes a lot of sense when you're reading all the stories of the characters. Yeah. They fell asleep in the boat, and then the boat crashed on the stones, some on a rocky shore of the river, and they're lost. And we are, yeah, as you said, members of the village, and we can be anyone in this game. Like, it's not just the heroes, like, it's not just the beefed up guys with an axe. You are right now an old wizard. Am I? Yes. <laughs> an old, old retired sorcerer. And I am a. Priestess. Right, yeah, so we're going out into the woods to find the children who their boat crashed here and um, they're now here. So the, the map here is like a maze and we're going to have to navigate through the maze to get to the kids, to grab them and to get back out. Problem is, um, we can get lost in the maze because there is an element of randomness yeah. to where you're moving. We roll the dice. So there is the direction die that lets you to go, lets you go right, right, left, or you have a free move which you can choose where you're going to go. Yeah, so essentially the map is made up of these crossings, and when you get to a crossing, you're either going to go left or you're going to go right. Um, so you would roll the dice. So I rolled left. So whenever I go to a crossing on this turn, I always have to go left, which means I might end up going in the wrong direction to where I do want to be going, yeah. which is problematic. But there is, if you're on F, that means you can decide where you go. So you can get control over where you're going sometimes. So although it seems kind of random, most of the time you get to go where you want, but occasionally your plan, plans can be thwarted because you can end up going off in the wrong direction. Because yeah. Or you can be encountering the creatures that live in the, live in the yes. forest, all the demons and other things that you're going to have to then have, decide what you're doing if you want to talk to them or hide from them or fight them. Yeah, so all these, all these counters over the board are monsters and we don't know what most of them are yet. Um, some of them we know have numbers on them. And those numbers will relate to different monsters. There is a book of encounters that has all the stories about the monsters and all the stats and what you're going to be comparing and everything that's going to happen yeah. if you encounter one. Um, there is also lots of cards that do different things. We store them in our bags or we store mm. them in our little um, player aid yeah. thing here. Um, it should be stressed that this is very much a prototype yes. version of the yes. game. Uh, everything has been printed out and cut in card. Whereas the actual game will have nice, really nice quality. Yeah. We've cards. got mini though. We've got one mini. We came with a one mini just to show how the what the other minis are going to look like, and yeah. I, I like it. Yeah. I'm I'm a sucker for minis though, so yeah, yeah we've got minis, then I'm in. Um, but yeah, so we've we've played we've played this game once once before, and uh, we we had a good time, and we're kind of learning through the rules, yeah. and now um, we still gonna... might make some. Errors here and there, yeah. but I'm hoping that we'll do it all correctly. Yeah. Okay. Right. So rather than teach you exactly how to play the game like from the start, we're going Just to kind of play. In. We're going to dive in and explain what we're doing as we're going. Yeah. Um, to save time. Yeah. So first um, thing is a day phase. Right. Yeah. All our um, available actions are unlocked. We might lock them during the game. Um, so whenever we encounter something, we we are free to choose what we want to do because if the action is locked, you can't do it. So first so, thing you do is you roll your dice. I roll the dice. So my moving is ten, so I roll a d10, which is this one. Yeah. And I roll the direction die. I can move six, and I have to turn left okay. on the crossing. So if you can move me, please, because it's too far. Okay. No, that's not me. 
on your ears. Yeah. One, One two, two, three, four, four five. five. Right, so, so you, you land on an event. No, no, don't flip oh, okay. it. Okay, right. So before we flip it, not that you knew what that I didn't even meant, see it. No. But you need to pick what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be running, hiding, fighting, or communicating? Whatever. What, and I'm whatever choosing this, this before I know what it is. Uh, we start with three yellow cards um, that we put in a bag. These represent supplies from the village. So we've filled yeah. a backpack with some stuff. Yeah. On a, I've got bread, and I start having. It's it's um it's a double use. Okay. So I can use it twice. There's also a broad bean and a razor blade. Okay. What have you got? Uh, I've got some fresh cheese, I've got uh, some spindle, which is a type of berry, and I've got some soot. Nice. Uh, I can use for camouflage, apparently. Okay, that's cool. Right, so I've moved and I'm encountering something. I don't know what it is. I'm good at communicating or hiding. I'm going to communicate. Okay. Actually, wait. My, my things, do Communication, successful running. Oh, successful. No, I communicate because I have bread. Apparently, bread makes me good at communicating. Okay. Would you like some bread? That's number eight. What is number eight? Number eight is olive oil. Olive oil. Okay. Right. From the land and field where he lives, he draws strength and magical powers to make him a potent and dangerous opponent. The Pulavoy is a human-looking creature that lives in fields and is extremely small. The tallest Pulavoy would be up to the knees of a grown man. And, I mean, there, there is there is loads of text yeah. um, about each one. So when you're playing with your with your kids or your family, you can, you can re read out the thing and properly get really into, the into the story. Yeah. But for the sake of time, we're not going to read through all the flavour text for each creature we come across. Because yeah. we just want to get across to you kind of how the game plays and what you're going to be doing. So there's loads of great, well-written text here about the various demons. I'm communicating. So you are communicating with him. Right. So... Um, you need to roll. We need to have you don't roll for communication. Yeah. Right, so you pick communication. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the if a pull is a hidden creature, which it was, it reacts with 11. Okay, 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 okay. And your communication is 9. nine. So currently you're going to lose unless you have something up your sleeve. Well, but my bread says it's only, it only affects allies, Diane and giant. So he's got 11, I've got 9. Yeah. So I lose. Yes. Um, he's very good. 11 is a really high stat. It's mm. just unfortunate you can't really communicate with the polar boy. So, uh, you are unsuccessful in your communications. So, um, the polar boy is curious and he wants to come with you. This is not the polar boy. You keep on moving, but must take it with you. His questions and babbling are distracting you. That is why your abilities in the next move are decreased by two afterward. All of them? You will get used to it. Apparently. First, use the sliders to set your new reduced level of all abilities on the card. Yes. Um, all your abilities in your next move are decreased by two. Yeah. Um... Right, so I've managed everything. Also, you also lock the actions for running and hiding. Oh my god! <laughs> so you can't hide with the babbling Pullavoy. Uh, the Pullavoy keeps you company into your next negative outcome. Afterward, he grumblingly disappears and goes into the field. Thanks, Pullavoy. So set him as an open creature on the crossroads closest to his field, uh, which is where you are. Yeah. Um, he joins you for the next three moves. But okay. if you have a negative encounter, he disappears. Okay. Um, right, for the ability in the encounter with other creatures, you choose the bigger value, whether that was the Polavoy's ability as a hidden creature or the character's ability. Do not um, form a group. Set the Polavoy's token on the time counter. Okay. Right, so I'm going, I also have a detail. And I'm going to be going seven, moving right, but it doesn't matter because I'm just going straight into this thing and decide what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm probably just going to hide from whatever this is. Okay, what is it? It's uh, 18. For this oh, that's group. my favourite flavour text in the whole game. Do you know which one it is? No. Azdaya arises out of some snakes. Oh, no. <laughs> 
have some snakes. Right, snakes. Um, what? So you're hiding. I'm hiding from these. You snakes. need a nine. Nine. My hiding is nine. Okay. You are successfully hiding. Pick a card from the orange deck to find out what happens next by pick in this draw. Yeah. So, what happens next? Uh, the witch's cane. Which is also cane, so it's yours now. You can use it one time. Uh, so I can use it by rolling a d6. On a one to three, I get the power to discreetly move away from the creature using any of the closest three crossroads. Okay, okay. Two or four, I can turn into an oak tree with the outcome being successfully hiding. Nice. Five or six um, means the cane is not working, it's broken. Oh, no. oh wow, you can turn into a tree. Yeah. So this. This has the backpack symbol on it, so it has yeah. to go in my back. Yeah. So we've only got so much space. Seven spaces. Right. Back to me. Uh, and it said, it said to keep that token there then. It didn't say anything. Okay. Well, it stays there. It's open. Well, you've, you've hidden from it, so yeah. it's there, right? Oh, I'm of one. Um, you can go in any direction then. Look that way. Okay. Because he's coming with me. Yeah. Hello. Right. right, because there's no encounter, you can choose Oh, I to... can choose a card. Yes, yeah, so you can explore the forest around you where you are. Yes. I found a geranium. Geranium. A flower. Fairies live in a place where geranium grows. By using geranium, all your abilities increase by two and blocks for one encounter. Okay, so helpful. Right, four. So because I came from this way, right means I'm going down this yeah. path. Yeah, so I'll go that's on. not you. That's not me. So one, two, three, four. Thankfully, there's no monster would here. Would you like to explore the forest? Um, I would like to explore the forest, and I have found a putter, the wolf's Apta. tail. Apta, the wolf's tail. Herb that eases movement, so it boosts my abilities for running and fighting by one when I use it for one encounter. Okay. Good, good. Right. Uh, you are next. Seven, three move. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna go one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Great. And he comes with you. Yeah. So he's got one more turn with him, then he's gonna yeah. disappear. Yeah. Uh, I'm also gonna explore the forest. Golden rod. It's a herb. Herb that eases the movement as well. Great. Same as you. Right, come on, I want right. I want to go up this way. Because to get to these kids, we're gonna have to go around. Because unless we have some way of crossing the river, mm. we can't get yeah. through any other way than here. There's like the three this. cards of the thing. That, there's probably lots of more things that let you swim. But... Eight. Let no. no. <laughs> Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What are we going to do? What am I going to do for this? Um, well, I'm, I'm just going to... Keep hiding. Well, what is it? It is 17. 17 is a Leshnik. Oh. I actually have a mini for that. You do. What's this one? Protector and the master of the forest, found only within forest boundaries. Leshnik is lively and loud when deep in a forest, but becomes quiet and unnoticeable when he is near the forest's outer boundaries. So what are you doing? You're hiding. Trying to, but as I recall, he's pretty... You need an eight. Oh, I've got nine. You're hiding successfully behind an old tree. Oh, wait a minute. Is that tree moving? Mm -hmm. You stand like the tree, but it slightly moves you to one side. The leaves are still moving as if we'll start talking to you. And all of a sudden, you start to recognise the words. Hey, you're hiding from me, don't you? Uh, well, I tried. That tree is Lesnik himself. With his wooden head and his rustled leaves, now watch. There's no point in running, even less in fighting, and therefore you just nod your head. <laughs> well, now you think that you are quiet, but you make such an unbearable noise by nodding your head. How is that even possible? Lesnik found you, but he has no intention of hurting you. He gives you the ability to make unbearable noise. It can be found in the blue deck. So you get mm. ability to make noise. Well, this was a good one from what I remember in the last game. Here you go. You can use it three times. It scares yeah. away uh, other exposure, demons, creatures, things. Yeah. So the closest, the three closest creatures in my position, mm. depending on what numbers they are, they're either going to disappear or they're going to come and get, get me. 
Right? <laughs> stuff. So this is an ability, so this goes actually on my yeah. character. So it's not taking up space in my backpack because it's in a bed. Um, I've moved I'm through the this thing. Because yeah. it was left, wasn't so it? So what are you doing? Um, Mark, some rubbish. Um, we're locked hiding and locked running. My communication has been unlocked. Um, and I can increase all my abilities by two. So I'll do communication. Right. You're fighting Allah. I'm Allah. Allah. What's my name? Well, this is an Allah. <laughs> well, Alice we'll are see. sentenced to eternal hunger. Alec is a demonic creature, and their arrival is followed by a strong wind, storm, and hail. Alec is insatiable. That insatiability forces them to devour everything that comes in their way, without anything diminishing their hunger. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Wow, 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 wow. And what are you doing? Sounds like I'm communicating with this thing. And I've got a nine. And I have the bread that its effect is a successful communication with an ally. Oh, dun, 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 well, that's good because his is 12, so hers. hers is 12, so you would lose. Well, I'm not. I'm using my bread. Okay. Uh, great. So you keep on going as if the encounter had never happened. Did oh. you have any movement left over? So I was here. I had 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, yes, yeah, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great. And then what happens? Um... First, lock the action for communication. Okay. And then, um, yeah, then their figure and token goes on to the time count. So. Oh, that was easy peasy. Okay, right, oh, well, that's turn. my turn. Uh, right, so I want a left now. Mm. You've got a white. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six. You um, haven't got room for anything. I've not, no. Right, I don't want to left i want to right yes i got a three just a one though oh no one step um okay one half to the left left eight one two three four five six seven eight hey, don't go back to the village i have a feeling we're in circles oh god oh you're meeting the newt hi newt uh seven i can Eat the geranium to increase it by two. Okay. So I'm on a nine as well. Okay. It appears that it is a helper of Newt's king. He intended to have a bit of fun with the props king used to lure people in the water. You easily overpower him and take the golden fetters. Lock the action for the fight and move token and Newt figure to the time counter. Find the card golden shackles in the pink deck. Basil, are you going to help me? Golden shackles. Golden fetters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can capture some physical creatures as numbers. Throw the chains in the direction of the creature and they will shackle it. By the time a creature sets itself free, it will be long gone. Read the outcome of a successful fight. Return the used card to the deck. Right, so we've uh, fast forwarded a little bit um, and we are now entering the evening phase because we have complete, encountered, we've seven completed enough encounters to reach the end of the day phase. Yeah, so what happens in the evening phase? Well, in the evening phase, uh, all the tokens get put back on the board, uh, face down, apart from the ones that can't be face down, like you would see. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all get shuffled up and redistributed. Right, oh, oh just... the one's just appeared in front of you again then. Yeah. Right, well, it's your go. You got three, three of nine, but I mean... Yeah, just gonna um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna... Communicate. Communicate. Right. What's it's that? Allah again. No, it's not. Your friend Allah. It's twelve. Well, I can't. I've got bread. I've still got last my last bit of bread. Have some more bread. Okay. And now the bread goes away. Okay, so you've eaten all your bread. Okay. So you're successful then. Yeah. 
So what was it? You keep going as if it was as though it didn't happen. So that was so, one. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, left seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. Very close. Oh no. Um, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Cool. So we could form a group. Nah. But I think it's probably better that we stay split yeah, up yeah. just in case. Just, we end up yeah, exactly. Um. No. <laughs> because you didn't group me. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna be doing something with this one. Um, I will attempt to communicate with it. What is it? It's uh, a number two. It's a moron. Persistence and cruelty, which Morris used to torture the victims, are unimaginable to a common person. Mm. So don't even try. Oh. What are you doing? Well, I'm trying to communicate with this thing. What's your communication? Ten. You needed ten. I got it. You managed to make blood brother blood sister with the Mora. You promised to take her to the village elderly and advocate advocate for her mm -hmm. to be accepted into the village. She yeah. is now an additional character that becomes a part of the search team and joins your group. Take oh, wow. X Mora ability table from the blue deck. Wow. So I got a friend. I got free end. You make a group, so you need to calculate your group abilities. The token and figure of Mora are removed until the end of the game. Thanks to you, she is no longer a mythical creature. Because, you know, you found her and you showed it to people, so hell. Great, okay, so she... But she walks, yeah, she walks with you. She's so part she's of my group. group. Right, so now she is part of my group, so we'll just explain groups. So there is a sheet of paper for your group, and different actions... Uh, basically, her stats are different to my stats. Mm. So she's level 10 running, hiding and communicating, but only level 7 in fighting. So running for our group is equal to the ability level for the running of the slowest character in the group. Mm. Um, but both... So that's 7, because I'm, I'm the lowest. Yeah. And seven. Hiding, equal to the highest ability level for all members of the group, so that's 10 for her. Fighting equal to the highest ability level increased for one for fight for all members of the group. So the highest is 10, no, highest is 8 for me plus 1 because she can help me, so 9. Mm. And communication equal to the highest ability decreased for one for all communication of members in your group. So the highest is 10, but because there's two of us, it's going to be reduced to 9. Yeah. Three, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come here, Sorry. Just an old man. Sorry! Yeah, what are you doing? Uh, I am hiding. Seven. What is it? What is it? What have you found? It is... The witch. Okay. She has supernatural powers and uses magic formulas. We want to war witches. Okay, so you're hiding. Mm -hmm. uh, nine. Nine. Okay. You're successfully hiding, waiting for your next move. The witch goes away. Lock the action for hising. 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 <laughs> uh, and move the token to the thing. So now it's me. So I want a left. Left, 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 left. Left, but nine. Oh, no. <laughs> No, no, left. Oh, I'm going this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, no. six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I'm just going down. <laughs> I'm sure the kids were down here by the river. Three of one. Boing. Ten. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> this isn't where they were. <laughs> I'm going to have to turn around. Uh, right. Oh, no. I got right. It finally says an encounter and yeah. stop you. Yeah, uh, I am gonna communicate with this encounter. It is eight. What's an eight? Who are you gonna attempt to communicate with? It's the Polavoy again. Crap. How well did this go for you last time? It did not go well for me. He last is time. eleven. Yeah, I'm nine. Um yeah. 
So again, he's going to hop on your back and, uh, and delete all your moves. Oh, gosh. So what, right. the five minus to hide? No. So your Run abilities minus. in your next move are all decreased by two. Yeah. Uh, and you lock the actions for running and hiding. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, next. <laughs> then after he goes away, I think you lock communication. Yeah. Right, so I've got to turn around. So now a left, right, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's quite at least some. Well, one, so four. he's that goes on the thing, right? And yeah. Right. Fine. I've got the children. Right, so you you form groups as well. Group as well. I'm gonna be super weak though, aren't I? Okay. Right. right. So stuff. you've got the children. So I just wanna. Head back as well now. Yeah. Or form with you guys into a mega group. Uh, free move five. Well, let's just head back this way. Well, you realize we need one more token in there, right? Yeah. Five left. Wow. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, free move seven. Encountering something. What are you going to do? Well, we are the best at hiding, apparently, so I'm going to hide. Although my well, my hiding is locked, but does it matter if I'm in a group? Oh, when you form a group, you unlock all your all your stuff. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, we hide. Right, number six. It's uh, so so glove. So glove. The guy with the head of a dog. Yes, there's the body of a man and the head of a dog. Terrifying. Um, if its height is similar to a man, however, if its strength, speed, and sense of smell, they outperform even the best of humankind. Okay, so we're hiding. Sort kind of like a werewolf there. Yeah, so. You're hiding from him. Yeah. Well, but you've got a good nose for sniffing out. Okay, well, we are 10. He is also 10, so you are hiding successfully. Yeah. You continue to move with your next move. First, lock the action for hiding. Then second, move the token and the creature figure for one more time. So. Right, so we've completed the evening phase. So right. now the night phase happens. So in the night phase... Lots of crazy things happen. What's happening? You turn all the tokens face up, reveal yep. what's there. Yep. And in the final version, we would then have put all the various miniatures for the monsters where they are. Um, then we are going to roll D d20 mm -hmm. to determine which monster is going to move. So monster number five. five. Um, I think this is a five. That is a five, yeah. Right, and then roll the d10 direction. Three to the right. Okay. And then we go again. Three. Three to the free move. I guess it's gonna to go towards the next one. Yeah. Uh, five again. Two to the right. I got. Okay. Right. So. Two. Which one? Number five. Two to two. Well, the same one again. Yeah. Three again. In uh, seventeen. Six free move. Yeah, seventeen. Do you know? Lesha? Yeah. Okay. Right, so Lesha's gonna fight number, number one. one. And his fight is 11. And number one is a Wraith. And the Wraith's fight is six. So. Om nom nom. Lesha easily defeats the Wraith. And we keep going. 19. Uh, Three. This one. Free move of five. Okay, he's probably going to hit me. Yeah. So what happens? Can you do, do you do a normal encounter with him? Yeah. Like so I can his? only I can only hide or fight. So what is this thing? Nineteen. I don't know. You probably. Um, you should know what they are. Nineteen is a uh, is Allah. Do I hide or fight the Allah? Um, okay. I will hide from the Allah. 
you will hide. Yes. Um, hiding is 10. My hiding is also 10. Um, you are successfully hiding and it's moving away from you. Lock the action for hiding and move the token on the tag counter. Okay, so we keep going. This yeah. D20. 11. It's this one. 4 to the left. And then more left. 4. 16. This one? Yeah. 10 we move. Wow. Sixteen fight is twelve and three fight is seven, so eating for breakfast on the move. Eight is Nick. Okay. Right, roll the dice. Okay. One more. Fifteen, do we have fifteen? Uh yes, somewhere. Oh no, fifteen down. Oh, so you rolled out my one for So and the one. Eaten. The one's eaten. 17. 17. That's the lesher. That's the lesher. One. To the right. He, he came from this way, so his right oh. is the right. 11. What is that? Eight, four again. To the left, 7. So he was going this way. Yeah. yeah. So 11 and 20. 20. Mm -hmm. That's 11 and 10. 20 wins. What was 20? It's my. It's my. Okay. okay. So now we've filled up the night. So what would happen now is all the tokens get flipped face down and go back on the board. So, I mean, all the tokens would get face down on the board, shuffled around and redistributed and then we'll begin another day. Yeah, we have three days to rescue the children. Yeah. So if we don't get them back by the end of the third day, we lose. Yeah. But, um, so with one day down, we have the children, we're on the wrong side of the map, <laughs> so I'm pretty confident we'll probably get them back in we'll the next two would. days. Yeah. Um, so it's not, it's not a punishingly hard game, but there it's are... It's just really random, because there's lots of die rolling, and yeah, you can get into a dead end, and just... Yeah get stuck somewhere or go in a way that you don't want to go or some of these creatures may teleport yeah. you somewhere else but like any game that's designed for kids and a family the randomness actually makes it more exciting yeah. and more engaging so um i think this is going to work really well mm. with, with a family so I, I i see the parents playing with with their kids or even just one parent playing with playing with their kids and playing playing through the game finding out about all the uh, kind of Slavic uh, monsters and demons, yeah. and uh, I mean, and the artwork from what we've seen so far is, is really nice. Great. It's um... so the artwork is all done by two by twins, but brothers from yeah. Bosnia and Herzegovina, um, and it's really nice. I really like it. I mean, even the board itself, I, I always find it's very difficult to make a f something feel like a forest on a map, but mm. they've actually managed to do it quite nicely. Like it's from the center, and the trees are radiating out from the middle. Yeah. I, I like that. All the little details of the rivers. Just like the, the witch's hut and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's and really nice. I, I remember when I when I was a kid, I always preferred board games where there was an actual physical thing you're moving around on. Mm. Uh, so I think that will appeal to them. So it has the the rolling and moving kind of mechanic that that children are used to, yeah. but it adds a few more interesting things into it. And makes it a much more interesting game than a, a, a lot of those roll and move style games yeah i like the stories in the book like about all the monsters and obviously this is this is something that is going to be really like personal to your family if you think your children can handle these stories if they're not too yeah. scary i mean obviously it's all said that it's all mythological and it's not real but obviously yeah. children's imagination it's... is something else you know yeah, they from, what, from what, we, what, we, what we've read, it's not too gruesome. But we haven't read the whole thing. We have not read the whole thing, but as as a parent, you can always edit what you're saying uh, when you're, you you don't have to read the whole thing. Yeah. So it's ten plus. I say yeah, probably. Yeah, you could probably maybe get away with um, 
of a couple of years younger, mm. but you definitely would need an adult to kind of play the game. Yeah. So there's there's too much there's too many rules to kind of keep track of for for a kid. But there's enough that as long as someone knows all the rules, and they can explain what's going on and how how it's going, then great. And to be honest, once we get all nice miniatures for all the monsters, yeah, the them. kids are gonna be begging to play this game. Right? Yeah, because they want they want all the all the monster figures and uh, character figures. I mean, surely, yeah. I mean, minis are something like that's obviously a big thing right now. If a game hasn't got a ton of plastic, it probably is not as appealing as other games to children. I mean, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I really like the theme. We're talking about pros and cons. I, mm -hmm. I, I love the theme. Like, I like. I, I'm wanting a, a good Slavic theme game for adults, and I still yeah. haven't found it. Well, this is great for families. Yeah, you know it's and all the stories and the feel of the game and if it's, yeah. if this is all gonna be kept in like a sort of rustic way if like there's like little linen bags in there or something and like as the prototype was packed with like little string and thing I really like that yeah. um so yeah I'm, I'm I'm really I really like the theme um the mechanics I mean it is a lot of rolling I'm not a, I'm not a fan of luck but as I said this is for children. And children yeah. will love it. It might feel longish, I think. Yeah. I mean, you, if you, we're playing with two, it is. Yeah. I, I think, the, the, to be honest, this is one of those strange games where the more players you play with, pro the faster it's probably yeah. going to end, because yeah. the more likely one of you is going to get the children first. And there's going to be more encounters as well going onto the board, because if you have five players running around... Yeah. They're gonna get there's, there's more chance they encounter those, so the days are gonna be quicker. Yeah. So, you have so it's sort of probably harder to get the children in time. Yeah, I, I feel like two player is probably not the best count for this game, which is what we've been playing it at. Yeah, I think three would be good because there'll be three characters, one each, all going out yeah. exploring, and four might be interesting because then the fourth, the children fourth character can be the children, and yeah. then that might help end the game quicker. So Actually, the game's probably going to be a lot faster and more and more streamlined with more people, which is very strange for... But I think it's going to be games. harder. I mean, it's not going to be harder to win because the children will also move, so yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, this is one of those things. If you, the, This is a game good for more people. Um, yeah. If you have, like, big family, sit down and just have an experience for the evening. It's not a game that you just, you know, you're done in 10 minutes because there's lots of cars, there's lots of reading. Yeah. Um... And I think that gives you also a feel of color. There's like collecting herbs because there's one like mm -hmm. there's a herb that you have you need the three of to do something. But it makes it feel like an evening experience yeah. type thing. Like right, this evening we're gonna play Forest of Radgost after dinner. Yeah, and, and you, you put play. a Witcher music in the background. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, looking forward to this Kickstarter. Definitely. Um, do do we know when it's roughly January? Gone? Some point in January. Yeah. So keep an eye out and. Uh, I suppose you'll be posting more about this closer to the time. Yeah, definitely. And yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to the minis as well, because I like minis. So, yeah. yeah. Great. So there we go. Forest of Radgost. Hope this gave you kind of an idea of how the game plays and uh, if it's the kind of thing that you you think you and your family would enjoy. Yeah. And uh, I guess two thumbs up from me. And a, and a, and a flowery. And a flowery. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.